Thank you, everybody. Thank you. We with our 15 minute public session. We've got two members of the public who are wishing to speak. So you have basically up to seven and a half minutes each. Um, and we don't. So I thought, is it John Hedges? Would you like to speak there? Yeah, actually, can't take too much of the time, but I think it's important that um, residents and people in the area come and make their feelings known. Um, this is the first time I've ever been involved in the planning process, and I've said, pretty short. I mean, I've been part of the criminal justice community for all my life, and what I've seen just doesn't fit the survival that I understand. So, we live um, on the phase two development of the developer, and when buying the property, it's all people called in by the Secretary of State, the return. So, I took comfort in that, and we're shocked to see that um, it was just ignored and brushed aside as the relevance really but um in um and when a, an elected member of parliament just made that decision and then officials just ignore it just mm -hmm. goes contrary to i believe the natural justice um i was at the previous meeting here and also was at the recent meeting in aylesbury um with the planning application industry review and again i was quite shocked by um by what i saw there the bullying of councillors by the officials um, complete disregard for the common sense views of the land, things like traffic and all the other issues that need to be addressed with new developments and some nonsensical idea of having a cycle right down the Morton Road. It just doesn't seem to, to have any um, logical sense. I'm right? um, a cyclist in one of the places I never arrived is in Morton no, I can scale the, the, the narrow roads and the point of traffic, which is only going to make worse. So, I've made a proposal which I completely support, but I'm not to be to say that I support that. And um, whether there's anything anyone can do, <laughs> so the, the, the process uh, is, is in place. Um, but um, I just feel that it's not a, a fair and reasonable process when. Sort of things that Thomas and May that Mark has put forward in his and the way that um, the council of the were bullied to do what the officials wanted to happen. And I was just didn't believe that that was happening in the night. So that's what I want to say. Thank you for the Thank opportunity you very much. to say that. Thank you. Thank you. And we've got a hard person. So we can see. Yes. Thank you. Thank you very much, Chairman. Uh, I'm Pat Arcadal. I'm the Vice Chair of the Northern Parish Council. I also chair the North Bucks Parishes Planning Consortium, mainly because no one else is willing to do it. <laughs> I didn't want to see it fall away. I think, and this is a splendid example of the importance of town and parish councils coming together in a united voice rather than letting ourselves just get picked off one at a time. Mm -hmm. And I'll try and be brief. And I, mean, I agree with all the points that were raised by Mark. And I could add that diversity <laughs> was completely overlooked despite all the latest um, requirements that are nominally placed on developers. And traffic and flooding were just given, I've written down here, a head patting, it will all be all right, dear. Don't worry. That was the attitude that came across, and it's complete rubbish. And this strategic science committee, and I watched the whole meeting and I watched other meetings as well. And in my view, it's very far from strategic, it doesn't operate in any differently from if they were looking at someone's conservatory. And the level of discussion is quite appalling. The officer's reports, you look at them, this one, I think that this was several, you know, 100 pages long. And it's quite obvious that few, if any, of the councillors have taken the time to read it. And they're very verbose, most of it's cut and pasted. There's no abstraction, there's no analysis. <laughs> And there's no justification in these reports. They just say, having three pages of 
cut and pasted material, this would constitute less than substantial harm or is acceptable. There's no way, there's no argument presented which councillors could even get into. And I think that this, you know, I'm just appalled by it, as has as, as, as been said. It doesn't seem to me to be operating in the way that I expected a committee of that importance to operate. And the meeting was a, a, a little bit interesting. There was no real discussion by most members of anything of significance. There were a couple of people who brought up the point we've been elected by residents and we need to be able to respond to their queries. But that just seemed to be made and then wander off into the into the ether. And I mean, my looking at this report, looking at the reports that I've read for others, and of course, we've got 170 houses due at Mays Mall, which will their impact will be very closely related, particularly on access to anything building on the Morton Road. And there's just nothing about it um, being, being, being raised. And it seems to be a complete, total lack of understanding of what constitutes sustainable development, which is supposed to be a thread that runs through the national policy, planning policy framework. And the confusion between improving GDP and sustainable development, and they're quite different. And so if you read through many of the officers' reports, they come up with this point about there will be economic development from building the houses and from the people who live here, who will live in them. Well, that applies to anywhere in the country, exactly the same. You could go and build up in Northwest Scotland and there would be economic development on that score. That's not sustainable development. And yet this time and again is allowed to go through and it's never being questioned. And so I think what really concerns me, I've spent more than 50 years working around the world on sustainable development around forests and landscapes. And what I see here is a complete travesty. The way in which communities here in the UK are given any credence and attention is far less than it would be under an aid project funded by the UK taxpayer. And that is surely nonsensical, it really is. So I think that this failed governance has already been mentioned, that very noticeable attempts to suppress dissent or objections instead of actually dealing with it transparently and openly. And I think that the Strategic Task Committee, given all the problems that were very clearly raised but then never discussed, they should have deferred it to a further meeting and required <laughs> the planning people to bring back proper information on flooding, on traffic, instead of just ticking it and signing it off. And I just felt that it was a travesty. There were too many important things that were inadequately dealt with and were just completely ignored. And I do think wearing both my hats, I think town and parish council, we've got to stand united against this. It's a planning system which effectively is run by the developers. It isn't even run by the planning officers, let alone our elected council. The people that run the planning system and affect the decisions are the developers. And that, to me, is unacceptable in a modern democracy in the UK. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Do any councils want to ask anything at this point? We will be, this will come up on our agenda fairly early on. If you'd like to stay and hear our discussions about that, mm -hmm. you're very welcome. You're very welcome to stay for the whole meeting if you'd like to as well. Yes. Thank you. So we'll now move to our agenda. Uh, formal agenda. Item one is the for absence. Thank you. And are there any declarations of interest at this stage? No, thank you. Just one absent, I won't just comment on the second application. Okay, thank you. Um, 
Now, we have three representatives from Swish Fiber this evening. That was a supplementary um, item, but I think in courtesy <coughs> to you, I would suggest we bring that item forward if Councillor is that agree with that. Thank you very much. So I believe you have a presentation for us. Yes. If you'd like to introduce yourselves and then. Um, I'm a person, uh, my name is Alex Golden. I'm on the original for the final switch fighter. Um, I uh, attend a lot of these meetings. I like to be present for the town council parish council meetings. And uh, it's about our introduction to what we do and to get some engagement going to. Uh, because a lot of things are going to happen while we're doing our networks, and we know that's already happened, uh, and just get those communication lines from the council. Thank you. Uh, my name is Michaela Kay. So I am the project manager of School of Us for Buckingham Project for Swiss Um, So I will deal with a lot of the complaints in to do with the council. Um, yeah, I'm not sure. Thank you. I'm the streetworks manager for the Swiss. I don't know if you want to do Thank you. Okay, so uh, how long do you want to spend? Because I can tailor this relative to whatever time you want. So, do you want We have a long meeting because we have to, <laughs> this is followed by um, a planning committee. So, so I'll probably talk for uh, less than just about five, ten minutes. Yeah, I'll go back to the Yeah. Okay. Uh, so I'll, so I'll just cover through. So, practically, I'll be able to get through some and I'll get through and get the famous things that are quite important that frame everything. Um, so, basically, who is the We are a team that builds infrastructure networks. Uh, we make speech to people who build fiber networks and also build bridges, solar farms, wind farms. When we started, we had not built that much new infrastructure in the UK for fiber broadband. So we started in 2018 and now lots of fiber providers, but we, we obviously are licensed by Ofcom. We also have open reach communication provider status. That means we can use BT open reach as ducks and poles. So one of the really important things is, and you'll believe is we don't like being up streets, but uh, we prefer to use the infrastructure currently in place. But a lot of the market towns where we focus, and that's our sweet spot, a lot of the copper network is direct ferry, and we need to put in proper ducting. And I'll come on to how we do build a ducted network, because where it isn't a ducted network, we build one. Once it's built, it's done, and it can be used for the next few years, et cetera. Um, we have all situated uh, pictures, systems in place for the councils. So Robbie is a highway, and we obviously do everything handled with highways. If anything goes wrong, which we did have an incident booking, we'll our hands up for that. I don't know why that happened, but I will address them quickly. And we'll find out people concerned, see whether there's a mistake or something that's in the chin ring up. Um, we are owned by, uh, you probably know them better as Octopus. So Octopus is a uh, 10 billion pound UK company, and they are a challenger to the utility incumbents. Uh, the investments in Octopus are UK taxpayers. So what happens if you're a UK taxpayer and you're end of life planning? If you invest in UK infrastructure, then uh, you, you get tax relief on that investment when you die. So a lot of our, our investors are like tens of thousands of UK investors who invest in UK infrastructure. So therefore, we are quite supported by all the your parties because it's not Chinese money or Russian money or anything like that, which is quite important in this day to know where the money source comes from. Um, we currently have unlocked the billion pounds in investing investments, and we build and operate state of the art. 10,000 megabits a second networks. And you might think, why are you building that today? Because you won't be building it. It's built, it's done. And when people have hologram technology and all these things are here today, when they start to use them to order clothes and things like that, the network will be here in booking to do that. Um, so basically, as I said, we're by a uh, firm. Uh, firm Credit Limited is where all the funds sit. And basically, the history of Fern is they built a lot of solar farms and wind farms. A lot of people have heard of Optimus Energy. And then you have, and then, and then you use like the retail brand to be the disruptor in the market against the <laughs> What we do, uh, we basically focus on the uh, small and medium sized towns, mainly across some counties. They used to be the ones getting established because the UK get funding for very rural. So you'll know the rural parts of uh, North Buckinghamshire got the UK, the UK funding. Uh, obviously, the cities are quite um, good to build because obviously the density of properties is quite close. 
and the market towns like Buckingham and places like that, and Tame and Marlow, Giles Cross, Beckinsale, are not easy to build, and that's what we focus on. And that's what we have all the tools in place to do. Um, list of places we've built. As you can see, people do mention us in Bucks County Council meetings because we've got to one of the biggest builders in Buckinghamshire, one of the biggest investors in Buckinghamshire. So, therefore, we are going to create problems every now and again. I just want to put that in the context. Uh, it's relative to how much work we're actually doing. Um, I want to point this out, this is really important. In the industry, we're all challenging PT operations. And in, 20, in June 2020, we put down that we had funding to build fucking. Obviously, about COVID in between and all that sort of thing, and a few things happened. And in June 2020, we announced the industry that we have funding secured to build this less lifted pounds from our owners' firm, and booking was on that list. So we've been planning to build bookings since before then, but that's when we announced it to the, to the industry. Now, to get the technology here, build it, and get the fiber three here is, you imagine, it's you don't see all the stuff you put in the background. Obviously, you see things like high speed too. You get the train line here. You got to put a lot of effort in. We already have the fiber here and, and ready to go with the speeds that will make Buckingham one of the fastest connected uh, towns in the UK. Um, I won't go about the communities transforming, etc., which is the next slide on the beard. Uh, I just say go look at trust pilot reviews, see what people are using it for. Our network just works. Um, and therefore, when you turn the hot water tap on, you get hot water out of it. And that's what people want. They can't really talk about the fact that oh, I wasn't able to do this, and it just goes away. So that's quite important to know once it's built, it's built. Um, there's lots of benefits to businesses. Uh, again, I could go through that a separate time and they push your time. But look, basically, it gives businesses both a fairly bit of growth and also the right sizing as well. It gives them lots of flexibility. Consumers, again, when I first did this presentation, they spent about hybrid working, working from home. COVID came along and then pushed everything five years forward. But again, it gets all the benefits of uh, social media use, uh, Netflix use, but there's a lot of new technologies that are coming down the pipe over the next 10 years, particularly around healthcare, because we want to keep more and more people in their homes as we get older. Technology is going to be used to keep people at home longer rather than going to social care. There's a huge amount of investment in that. So, this is all part of that long term strategy for that. Um, very important piece is this next one, which one? Oh, wait. Um, I'm on this one here. I'm not on that one. Keep looking. <laughs> um, is the fact that uh, we can buy fiber all the way from the property to the internet. Uh, it is a piece of fiber that travels at the speed of light, and that's why we get the speed that we do. It's really important that that's new infrastructure. So not using the BT infrastructure, it's brand new, all the way from the property to the uh, to the internet and back anywhere on the globe. Um, we do find a lot of um, confusion in the market because the biggest player, BT, is allowed to use the word fiber essential, fiber one, and fiber two for copper products, and they are just not any really comparable. That is like saying your petrol car is an electric car because it's got battery in it. It's just not comparable. So that is something to be quite important about, and that is something that I spend a lot of time educating on, and I go on the radio and the TV, and, and I've quite a few interviews on that, but that is, that's created confusion in the market, which does slow us down when we're trying to um, convert people into fiber and get them to understand the benefit why we're building it. This is something that quite a few people um, don't really know, but it does make places more interesting to buy and property values, et cetera. First thing people ask you say, eighteen three eight, what's the broadband like? It's becoming more and more important. <laughs> if you've got a good fiber broadband in your area, then it makes a massive difference. And the areas where we don't go, like for example, go down this street, and I'll be honest, everyone complains about it. But if we didn't go down that street, they'll all complain about it even more. It's kind of disruption we build it, but people getting missed out get quite worried about it. But we have played, we have plans where we try and expand the what we build, and we use what's called voucher funds to do that to get out to villages, etc., around the towns. Um, we have the factors network in the UK. Um, this got out in the wild. Um, the, the, this was a speed test put on a, a platform called LinkedIn. It isn't as fast as we don't go faster, and that got picked up by the national press. Obviously, it looks free press as having Gerard's Cross, and also the industry press as well. So we do have the fastest networks that are being speed tested for that. It's not important for you to know today, but it's important to know you have it for the future. Uh, this is the fastest we've gone with ever being recorded in the UK, which is over 9,500 megabits per second. That's crazy speeds. It means things can just, it just works. I mean, we shouldn't be having this discussion because we have this technology, but it just works. Um, now, the interesting bit on the next slides 
because this is actually leading me to think about building broadband networks because this is where we get the most disruption and the most, um, we, we spend the most time. So we basically build networks using, I'm um, sorry, so got the We primarily build networks using 50% uh, open infrastructure poles. So we allow us to put our fiber down the pole through the current tubes back to our cabinets and then from our cabinets, we then go back into it. We don't touch the BT exchanges, but we allow to use their ducts and poles and put offset chambers on this. That's 50% of the time. As you can see on this picture here, these, these are some BT chambers where the guys are working. And what we we'll do is we use their, 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 their network and we'll put an offset chamber and we'll put all our things in that chamber. Can, can, I, can I just stop you there? Because we are, we are pushed for time to see. Yeah. I think everybody probably is very um, concerned that we should have good broadband in Buckingham. I think the issue for town council has been the disruption which has been caused to many of our res residents and repeatedly. and um, although everybody acknowledges we need good infrastructure and that utilities have the right to provide infrastructure, what we are concerned about is the disruption to so many of our, our households at this time. So we, we put together, a, so I've got some, um, so I've got farther on here, so yeah. So what we do is, and we do do this, every property gets, we try to get every property three times, even though everyone says, I didn't know you were coming. And then on the back of that, we keep the website updated with the information constantly. We're not on our website today. So these are the streets in Buckingham. I mean, I'm sorry, it's two, it's two and a half pages, but this is where we have, we have um, uh, permits to build, and these are the dates where we've got those permits to build. And that is part of a major works program that we sit down and work with the highway team and council. Now, we do engage with a lot of the other town councils in Buckinghamshire where we make practical decisions. So, for example, we made a practical decision on headset traffic lights or something like that, or a bad corner, or et cetera, et cetera. And that's why Michaela's here, because normally the project managers know the town clerks, and therefore we try to keep in contact about and know those places where the town knows not be quite sensitive about. We, we, are, we, we do do that. We haven't been able to talk to ourselves, don't know whether COVID or whatever's going on the way, but we've been trying to get the meeting for some time because we're trying to share this information. So this is online 24 7 for everyone to see where we're working. And then when anything gets ready to improve, we can work on the back of that. Also, the crews on the ground, you must talk to them if you worry about anything. They are absolutely drilled into them. That if any residents need something moved, access for their car or anything like that, people don't realize these aren't evil people, they will help you. They will move the barriers, they will help. And that's something that's really important. It's not like them and us. We, we, we've had to work in much more, well, with some tricky bits when we go to town centre, but we do have to manage some tricky situations. And a lot of the time, we get through it by working actually with the town council, or parish council. Uh, the county sometimes gets a little bit annoyed about that, but it's, it's what we do, sorry. Uh, just, we'll have, we've got questions and answers, it's the next, Session. I've already got Councillor Stuck to bring Councillor Harvey on to speak. And so, Councillor White and Councillor Hall. <laughs> and, and, and again, this is build updates page. And actually, once I show people this, people then know where to go to. It just helps us. And sometimes the council on their website puts a link to this because everyone wants to know where you're building and when you're doing it. We only have it for six weeks. We don't even know where we are going from than that because our compact is like nowhere to go as well. Uh, because they can try and block it as well. Uh, the other thing is, and I want to make this very important, is we build relative to the law. So we we build that one under the under the Communications Act 2003, Section 109, Regulation 9. We have to build ducted networks at a certain depth using a certain way. This does create a lot of spoiling disruption. We we can't just put a little pipe in. We've got to build it up to the regulations, and so that is what we as we own by octopus, 10 billion pound company. That's what we do. We follow the law. And the spoil that spoil <laughs> that you see on the various pictures, that has to go away. That can't go back in. We've got a backfill with the different materials. So we, we have to work around all of this. And for example, I know there will be disruption and there will be dirt and spoil. Well, that is only when we have to do civils, which in Buckingham, I think it's going to be about 40% of Buckingham civils, isn't it? And uh, to build the network. Um, I know it's probably for a bit, a lot of this to talk about, but I think that's probably a good point to stop it at the moment. Thank you, Thank you very much. And 
So start with council, start three. Can I remind you we should stand in yeah. the council? Yeah. 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 No, it's not you, it's just a tradition we have yeah. Um, I'm going to come in. A couple of things really. Um, early this morning, I had a phone call from a lady in Age Hill um, who's been trying to contact you. She's been trying to use your vast number on your board. No luck to get through. Nobody answers it. And she, every time she phoned, it just kept going off. So your system of complaints isn't working. These are Another area of King Charles close, not sadly relatives and relatives and um, residents there. Um, they've been without their internet now for three weeks. Um, I don't know what their personal needs are and there's cause to whether they've got alarms to um, for safety purposes. I don't know what they are. They're very vulnerable, um, they're very elderly, and, and, and they've been told to go and contact their provider. And of course, their provider is quite often by now not actually Overridge or BT, it's somebody else. And they're just going around in circles. Now, if you've got just a mobile phone or you haven't an even, they're now getting calls from their friends' house. You know, they get a phone call and the phone rings. And it's not for them, it's for their neighbour. Because somebody's moved the wires slightly and nothing's happened and they're getting calls for the wrong house. Now, it would be funny if it wasn't so serious. But I don't know whether any of these people have got alarms, which are an emergency alarm, which they need because they can pull the bell. Well, let's hope that if they do pull the bell, they don't go to the wrong house um, because they're not working. I don't know what's going on up there. And I'm not an expert in it. And you said that you're going to work to resolve these issues. They've been trying for three to four weeks to get this done. And they're frustrated, unhappy and cross. And I don't know what other councils have received by the way of that, but if we can take anything from this this evening, if we're very impressed with the, for the future, but today we've got vulnerable people who have been affected, and I'm more concerned about the present today, the future will be interesting, but we need to help those people. Can I have your assurance that you're going to instantly go and do that? Councillor White is the um, Councillor Mordew, Councillor Avia, the local members of that board. I want you to lay out with them to actually sort this out. <laughs> You know, the greatest respect, don't do that. I'm asked you, you're working in an area with the greatest respect. Your works have impeded okay, so on another no, provider's no. line. Those people are vulnerable people. Don't give me you're not open reach. Thank you, Councillor. You are done the, your firm's in the area, they've done the damage. Those people have got a provider they're relying on now and they're not getting it. They're not interested in this today. They're interested in having the phone working tomorrow morning. Can you give me the detail? I, I personally have a look and see if the present supplier is going to help. I mean, I, I, I know the process. I think, okay, it's, it's I, I, how it works is if there is a disruption made on the opening network, and I don't agree with this process, also it, 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 I think it creates vulnerable situations and how much that works. The regulation is, and we, we've done it in the town where we've got guys who can fix it on the spot when things happen. But you have to have your plus net or talk to or contact open reach and open point can do. We can't, but I'm just telling how the process is. We have set things and fix things. But if you give me the details, I'll, I'll see if I can help. Thank you. And Councillor Harvey. Um, yeah, thanks for coming this evening. Um, a couple of points, really. Um, you said you've been in touch with the town council before now. Got yeah, emails to the town clerk before now. When did you first write to the town clerk? Do you make order that? I have only been in place probably less than two months. We've had a couple of communications with so really I've been yeah. it's about arranging to come in for some of the things. I don't have any recollection in that time. I've had any other communications. I think that's important. What we try to put it on the report. I think if you're saying that you've been trying to get in touch with us to come here months ago to tell us, because we don't read the trade press, uh, that you're only doing this work within the town, then um, as Claire has said, uh, she's been in place a couple of months before then, the previous town clerk, very diligent, very professional. I struggle to imagine that he would not have raised this as well as to a meeting 
before now, or, or been in touch with you all sorts of emails. So I'm very, very interested to see the emails that were sent through um, so that we can understand what's happened at our end. Uh, because clearly one of my points was, why on earth have we been here before now? We are a very active, um, very involved town council here. And, and it disappoints me that this is the first time we've had a meeting with you about all this disruption to the town. The other aspect that is in a sense not really a problem, but it is, is that the town has also been dug up by giving here at the same time as yours. And the one thing that people say over and over and over and over again, why can't they coordinate it? Why do they both have to dig things up separately at a different time and even dig up the same holes all over again? That's the thing that ultimately <coughs> frustrates that heck out of you because they cannot understand. Because if you told us and Giga Clear told us that you're both going to dig up the town, we didn't say to you, can you coordinate? Can you please put in the same tubes, whatever, into the same streets so that you're not digging up the same streets at the same time or even a few weeks later. That's the thing that has rankled and upset people the most. And I know it's so because I've seen the comments on social media. That's the issue that you as a provider have got to sort. You've probably lost your chance in the market to do that now, but please, on that list of 30 other towns, whatever other towns will come, please can you coordinate with other providers who will also have to dig up the roads to say, let's get together and make this easier for the punter because it's not easy. Thank you, Councillor Harvey. Do you, do you want me to? There's, there's something you might need to be aware of as a council, which is there may be another provider that's not building networks according to the law. Uh, we're happy to work with those providers, but they have to be working from the law. That's all I'll say. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Um, thank you. Yes, um, I've had the benefit of, of having a brief meeting um, a few weeks ago with Swish uh, with my Buckinghamshire like, Council hat on, uh, raising some concerns about some of the issues that uh, John we've just raised about coordination and, and issues of having two broadband suppliers in Buckingham. We have a surprisingly fortunate position where two privately funded organisations want to invest heavily. In Buckingham, for our private brilliant broadband options. So we have three options very soon. However, as everyone's well aware, and our residents have made very clear on, on, on direct letters and social media and everything else, the disruption is very unfortunate and it's causing local councillors, local councils, and our staff a lot of extra time and resource to deal with this. And I suppose the big plea is. That we understand your individual private companies, but you also have a responsibility to the community you're working in to work together. Just as we'd expect BT or Open Reach to talk to the gas company if they're working on the same street at the same week, we would expect you and the other to also speak to each other to make sure that your coordination works, that you're not tripping over each other. And yes, I know you're in a competitive situation, but you're going to switch on your networks in very similar terms. I know you're desperate to get all those doors connected as soon as possible, but that shouldn't be at the expense of our long-term liability of those pavement, or the quality of those pavements being poor, and it shouldn't be at the expense of people having to then disrupt our daily lives, having to chase you or your competitor about getting on with fixing the work that you're supposed to be doing. Um, so I'd like your assurance in public today, and I've, I've, I've raised this with you before, so hopefully you, you'll be able to do this that you understand and acknowledge those concerns, that you will work as well as you can with your competitor when you're in the same or simps in your vicinity of pavements, and that you will reduce the impact on residents by ensuring that each and every resident will get a letter about who you are. Because I wasn't made aware of, of the issue in my ward, I'm sure you didn't tell me that because I couldn't deal with it. Um, but if they had a letter through the door, they know which company is digging in the street that week, because that's the big issue. They don't know which company is in their street that week. They have no idea that they've got to go to a website and how accurate that is if you've not given them a letter. Um, and the Giga Clear made that commitment to us that they would make sure that residents in the street would get a letter with a phone number if there was an issue, and they wouldn't be chased away by 
by their subcontractors if they happen to be concerned about the quality of works or took pictures in the street or whatever. Because it is not illegal to take pictures in the street of anyone doing anything. And, and I know you've dealt with that issue, but your subcontractors need to behave better. Some are good. I've got reports that some streets are, you know, sailing very well. There are other streets where things are just not working well, which means you've got individual teams working to give them some of you. That is not good enough. Mm -hmm. uh, and just to be fair, we had exactly the same discussion with Gilbert here when, the, when they first started, and they have dealt with most of those issues. I hope you can take that on board. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. I mean, I can, can I just ask before we go on? Have you finished your presentation to see our forecasting on, um, on YouTube, and then we can go back to full screen on the recording? Yeah. Um, as, I, as I said, we we will we will always build legal networks. I can't say more than that. I think there is something coming that people have to be aware of that will make will understand the situation. Um, I can't say more than that right now. But there is a set of rules under that act on how you build a network in a town to build it properly, and we will follow those. Regarding contractors, uh, Michaela's here, and that's why I like to get her engaged with yourselves because if, if the phone number doesn't work, which I'll be straight on that because that's quite a worrying for. I need to check that board out, which I don't know where the counter is, but that's really important to me. That's very, very important because it's important to get hold of really quickly. And secondly, also keeping an note of where, where, where the issue is with the people who've been who've lost their, their copper line connections. Uh, uh, we, we, we can see you can try help with that. Thank you. The issue of communication, though, because I know in my street, um, I noticed it's posted on around a lamppost, which is almost impossible to read. The individual households didn't receive anything, and I thought that was completely unsatisfactory. So, so on that point, we do three levels. So first of all, can you tell me that I, I, I pay for the post office, so I have a, a record of it to send a letter, first letter, to every single property we, we, we put in design, etc. Uh, that's the first one. So I've got a record that, for example, I can turn and say, Number one, rock and roll got this letter. And then Michael's team, who built it here, they, they should have leaflets in their vans. And then we have a separate sales, not sales, that pre sales brief with the leaflet dropping as well. So I'm always interested in these messages, but I have had it in other areas where I've addressed it as well. I've also had it in, in case of me repent, down in the south. I haven't had it in George, so it's a second school. And I then you know, try and find out why didn't that course get through? Because I pay almost a pound a letter. To make sure that a letter goes through to explain all the website why we're doing it and that's the, at least everyone's got that and if one of the neighbors read it at least they'll know where to go and then we have to do two pieces as well so i'm very aware now that i've got to check on that because i assume rightly or wrongly that some of these letters get delivered and if they don't i may find that i want to talk to people so i will check on that and you might get another one again sorry in a week's time showing the generic ones to start we said this is all websites it also points out where one network is the gas and the electric and everyone else. And that's sort of like our handkit letter to so people know where to go on the website. And then we do we should have within you know, 24 hours, 48 hours, a letter drop from Michael's guy. But you can check on that as well, can't you? Thank you. Councillor Cole. Thank you, Mayor. Communication is your very worst performance you do. Um, my name is Mark Cole. It was me who raised the problem about Sunday working, which you addressed. Thank you very much for doing it so quickly. But the damage is already done. We've had GigaClear already for nearly two months on Page Hill. I'm a ward member for Page Hill. My own street, GigaClear kept us in touch all the time. We had advance letters, they've had meetings, even this morning from GigaClear. This is about a meeting here in the community centre next week. Come and see what we, how it's all going. They're keeping us in touch throughout. Had absolutely nothing at all from Squish at any time. We've never had a letter through the door, apart from the email you kindly sent me. And you, I know that the neighbours who are affected, you sent a letter of apology to, and, and the gift of the box of chocolates, which they did appreciate. But it's not enough. You know, we've had nearly four months of work up there. Giga Clear to start with, followed by you. Um, I'm in a small close of eight houses. Giga Clear were there for seven days. You came in a week later for another five days. Can you imagine? And the noise has been non-stop. It's not just at weekends. A lot of us work from home. Half the time we can't because of the drills going and the cutters and everything. 
That's been the disruption part of it. And if you just told people about it in advance, we'd have more understanding. That's where you've really fallen down as a communications company. And I think you've got to do a much better job about that because at the moment, GigaClear finished the job and had gone. And a lot of people, including my neighbours, have now signed up with GigaClear. You've missed the boat. By the time you've finished, the whole estate will probably be with GigaClear and you'll have no, no one to go to. You, you, you've missed the boat completely. And as my colleague said, why you didn't link up the two of you and use the same thing. Come up to Page Hill, have a look at the pavements. They are in a dreadful state. I know it's not all you, some bits giga clear, but it looks like a, a jigsaw puzzle all over Page Hill Estate, you know, and we've had it up to here now. Thank you. I don't intend to go over the same old questions again, but what I would like to know, uh, I believe you can share the same duct work with other providers, and I know you have done in some cases, but you don't in others. Just a point of clarification around that, with under telecommunications that. Um, as far as the pavements go, yes, there was a lot of disruption, but I don't think you can do uh, groundworks without causing disruption. And a lot depends on the ground crew that's actually working. I was fortunate in the groundworks which were done where I live. They're very courteous to put the barriers up and it's all cleared up and the pavement was improved where the tree roots had been cut through and then lifted up the tire and the water made over. But it does come down to communication. I'd like you to say, and the other thing is you're responsible for your own reinstatement, I believe. So if you can just uh, clear up those three points, the sharing of ducks and the reinstatement and how the police and the reinstatement goes. Because Buckinghamshire Council only provides a license for you to operate on the street or on the pavements. Those are those three points, really. So on the sharing of ducks, um, it'd be interesting to share ducks, but there's no ducks. You can have any ducks in the ground. They just direct through the network. <coughs> it can just go to service. So I think you've got to be aware of that. And if that comes out, this is the case, it's got to come out. So we would share ducks. There's no duck in there. Uh, to share. So I know you're very happy with Geek here. They're going to be happy with what come out. I don't know. But they build quick and cheap. Then you will come in. We broadcast, we, we, we broadcast will come in and they jumped in and dug and they build the directory, which is what we're not supposed to do under the Act. So that's going to be investigated. And it's currently an investigation by Ofcom. So in answer to your ducks, we do look at sharing ducks. We have worked with uh, some of your colleagues in South Buckinghamshire and not shared ducks. We've done it we've done once. And we've, we've shotgunned on top of each other. So one of them and eight the other. So you only do one. So we haven't shared ducks. We've got two ducks in there, for example, a shotgun to put each other. So the answer to that is we, we, we do try and do that because it makes sense. But we, we haven't done it with, with uh, in any of the areas where we've tried to with, with, with that company and we've tried. And um, this is the sport, the sport of the county where that's happening. So you're the next one, sorry, the second one. Yes, do you want to mention me in several? Yes, so I'm the nurse one. Well. We do at the point. Three to the garage, you can the way it works, and it's governed by the SLH, so the commission is down the highways, and that is inspected by the local authorities to check on our compliance. We do it ourselves, uh, our inspections, but they also do their inspections to check on the quality. Um, whether it's a debt, everything will be put back to plan that it should be for those requirements, and then we we'll have to do so. Um, I did it for nearly 10 years. Um, it is very important to do that then that quality. If it's going to fail, it's going to fail in the first couple of years. And on some occasions, it does. Uh, but then we're held accountable for that. The responsibility is on us. After that period, it goes back to the general public and to the county council to take on. But as I say, that, that two year period is very, very important. What Alison was mentioning there uh, was trend sharing, which we can do, but we do need to do that. Thank you very much. Um, Just one point. Having, thank you. Having listened to what you said, that uh, maybe the, the other competitor has not followed the, the process, I despair uh, for the future, because they're going to then dig it all up and try and comply with the law. So we're going to have another dig up in your areas. Thank you. I'm, 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 I'm just remember I warned you about that today, so I can't do any more on that. 
Uh, you've clearly heard a lot of the frustration that we're expressing, but because members of our community are expressing those, you know, quite serious um, concerns about the disruption that's been caused, not just by yourselves, but also by the UK, one after the other, and possibly another provider in the future as well. And I'm concerned about the, uh, we have declared a climate emergency here as well. And the use of resources seems to be very poor as well. We have finite resources in our world, and we've got to make sure we're using those resources properly. And, and on that, just, just on the, so fiber optics uses about 20% of the energy that the copper network uses. So I, I know obviously the thing at the road and stuff is using materials. I'm hungry. Yeah, we only have one plan up like important to me as well. <laughs> uh, but one of the things that we get is the fact that over the long term it will be successful, it will pay itself back many times because it's 20 percent of the power is needed by a fiber plus network and then the copper network. That's just one thing to remember it helps. Council Harvey, we really I know there was just one quick question you mentioned that some illegality potentially how will we as a council get the hero? I'll, I'll probably would keep um uh more on the book um, and the clerk uh, updated. Okay. Um, I, I, I will do that. Um, again, I've got the communication message loud and clear. We'll, we'll, we'll rectify that. I apologize. So I'm quite upset about that. Well, thank you very much for coming along this evening yeah. and uh, for listening as well as responding. And uh, we, we look forward to hearing again as things develop. And we do trust that we won't have any more um, disruption than is absolutely necessary. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. I am thinking of the time. I am trying to time members to to maximum of three minutes. And please only speak once on each item. We now move on to item three on our agenda, walking road phase three, strategic science committee. And I think Councillor Cole is now being something. Thank you, Mayor. Yes, um, it's been distributed to everyone the report on the strategic sites down at Aylesbury on the 1st of September. And as you've heard from guest speakers tonight, Charlie Hedges, Pat Hardcastle, um, we were not happy with the way the meeting was run. We're not happy with the outcome. Uh, so much of what we in Buckingham have been working hard to make as our policies was totally ignored. Some of it was written over. Um, I don't propose to go for the strategic sites committee apart from thank Councillor Statchbury for his input. Um, he and Councillor White between them had called the plan in. Unfortunately, Councillor White um, was not mentioned during the meeting, although they read out statements from others who'd been called in, Councillor Osberg and Councillor Mordew, um, who who'd put objections in, Councillor Statchbury, but Councillor White, they for some reason totally ignored it, was not read out during the meeting. So <clears throat> I find that bad. So could I just move on immediately to the motion resulting from all this? Um, you've all got it in front of you, but I will read it out. But this council requests that the Secretary of State for levelling up housing and development calls in the decision by the local planning authority, <clears throat> Buckinghamshire Council, to approve 200510 Morton Road Phase 3 for 130 dwellings on the following grounds. The Buckinghamshire Council Strategic committee members were effectively bullied into approving the application by the committee chairman and officers who threatened that any delay to granting permission or appeal against refusal could result in hefty costs against the council. The Buckingham Neighbourhood Development Plan was completely ignored in matters of design and layout, although it is the preeminent design policy for Buckingham, as stated by the VARP inspector. That officers admitted that parking spaces, garages, and electrical vehicle charging points did not meet the VALP's minimum standards, despite it being a spacious greenfield site. And finally, that there was no consultation with Buckingham Town Council about Section 106 agreements, contrary to Buckinghamshire Council's own town and parishes charter. And I move that motion. Thank you. Thank you. And that's seconded by Mr. Thank you. Let's be um, um, bring in the Matthew Campbell. I want to succeed and I want to do things in a process that we might succeed. So I'm putting an amendment to the motion. I'm just bringing the motion. The motion needs to be 
and possible we did speak about this earlier today. Um, I propose that the council agrees that prior to advance action in order to avoid the unnecessary deployment of staff time in council funds. A letter is sent to Greg Smith to ask him to liaise with the Secretary of State on the feasibility of the calling application on the grounds described by Councillor Cole, resulting in response to be clarified in the next full council and move forward. The reason I'm doing this is because I want to win. I want to know that we've got grounds to do it. And I'm conscious that as from today, to the best of my knowledge, after what I looked into it, is the application hasn't been determined because they're waiting to do the Section 106 agreement. So we have a period of time. The MP wrote to the council and your good self, saying that he gave support to your motion. And I think it's only right that we liaise back with him because he has access to information that we don't have, which may be at this stage cheaper than seeking some legal advice. And then we may have to, in the interim, look at the grounds that we can use to do this because there's no grounds in the motion. And um, we agree it, we've got to have planning grounds to press it forward. And that gives us a bit of time to all work together come up with those grounds to do it because um, what I don't want to do is judging by the obvious in the community without going into other issues is to lose and this isn't to align, it's to enforce, strengthen, and move forward. I hope that you accept it in that manner. Can you read out what your amendment is? Oh, Okay, thank you, Councillor. Just the same there, I accept the amendment. Thank you. Yes, exactly. I'll be clear, Councillor. Thank you, and um, I'm grateful for Councillor Cole bringing the motion to this council. Um, I'm quite concerned that some of the issues have been raised both by members of public and my colleagues um, about this application. Um, there are a couple of things missing from the motion, so I don't want to muddy the motion, but I think there is there is something else this council could do in addition to this motion, which is actually to put a formal page and put in the council itself, because I think there are a couple of issues that are sort of inferred by this. Um, one is it went to strategic sites committee. For me, I think that's an interesting debate because it's a small, in terms of strategic sites, it's a small site. It doesn't fall into the standard terms of what strategic sites that you should look at. So the whole point of Buckingham Council was to have local planning committees to deal with local planning matters. So the planning decisions were made locally. Now we all know this is contentious, but it was in the ballot. It was going to happen, but the importance of it being going to committee was that it could get the scrutiny and the attention to detail to make sure that section 106 design and all the other bits that we were concerned about could be addressed properly and thoroughly. But of course, being a strategic committee, and with the type of report that we saw, we didn't get that level of scrutiny mm -hmm. at all. And that's really disappointing. Secondly, because it was strategic sites, I was completely unaware it was going to be that week, that meeting, which is why I couldn't attend. It was bank holiday week. I was away on holiday that week. I only got notice of meeting the Thursday before the bank holiday. Um, which meant I had no, no chance to, to do anything about that. And I'm particularly uh, concerned here that my robust comments made during the planning process were, were glossed over. Um, and thirdly, just to make the point that Section 106 has been a long going issue, I thought I'd fixed the process when I, when I was the Kevin of planning a couple of years ago. Clearly, they've fallen back into bad habits, which is really disappointing. But I also want to point out that as local ward councillor, I was not involved with Section 106. So don't take it personally that it's town council that's being dismissed, but it is the back of the council ward members. Mm -hmm. um, but and I support the motion and perhaps the council might consider some additional um, 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 and yeah. um, 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 is on board with the amendment. Councillor Harvey was um, up first. I kind of say I, I support what Lord Wong just said. I think and I, and, and I and I hear as well his frustration with, with the process. Uh, councillors here will well know. That my view has been ever since the constitutional change, if not before, um, that Buckinghamshire Council has allowed itself to become an officer led planning authority. 
not a member of them because the way in which the constitution is rewritten and reintroduced. Well. Councillor John's here with smooth, mind you, and I think all the events since are proving it to be correct. Um, and it disappoints me and disturbs me that that is the case. Because, for example, I think the Strategic Science Committee is merely providing us for cover to our problem positions. Councillor Boyle is absolutely right. This should have gone to the local planning committee, but officers know that if it did, it would, would have received the scrutiny um, that it otherwise didn't get because the members on that committee are miles and miles away. So, I, I, I mean, I would move, not as a formal motion, obviously, but I would hope that one day the Strategic Science Committee would actually become properly strategic and stop messing around in, in local planning matters that really ought to be dealt with by local planning uh, members, which is not happening. Well, it didn't happen in May, didn't happen in Maids Morton, and it's not happened here as well. Um, and I think that's the clear statement. So, yes. and I just think, and frankly, I think the officers are living in La La Land. The notion they're building some quite expensive third lane at the bottom end of the A422 is certainly going to magically persuade people to drive around the bypass while up in the middle of town. It's living in La La Land. Equally, the notion of painting another arrow on the road by the old jail to just sort that. Um, around about how it's also equally living in our um, um, as well. So, um, for all those reasons, of course, I support this motion, um, and I agree entirely with Council Statutory's amendment. Um, and I would support an amendment going in on what Council Boyd has said as well. I think it will be important to raise this concern um, with how this matter was dealt with, because clearly it's not a good process um, at all. And we need to try and keep on trying um, to press Buckinghamshire Council. To just be, you know what, a little bit more democratic about these sort of matters. Thank you. I'm going to call the people who haven't yet spoken first. Thanks for such good. Councillor Moore, do you think Councillor Andrew Boyd? Okay. Uh, I cannot accept any motion with the word bullying in. Because bullying, bullying is a clear definition and it's repetitive motion and force of people. And that's by the anti bullying alliance. The definition in there what bullying is. Um, so I do agree with writing the Secretary of State because he was the one that produced the permission in the first place. Uh, when the unitary was set up, there was going to be two strategic priorities, one for North, one for South, and that was dropped and they had one. And I think it just proves it. There is a strategic. Same as for the um, local authority, I mean, there should be at least two. You cannot expect people, and more than I would, cast judgment on what is going on great, in Great Mission and Lamington. I haven't got the detailed knowledge. Why should they class, you know, make uh, comment what's happening in Buckingham? It's totally irrelevant. And strategic is something which is by definition architectural. Sure. You don't have two strategic authorities. It should come to the local planning authority. And what he said about officer led, officers have to go and work on a very narrow band, which is governed by the national policy plan framework and what is legally possible and what is legally not possible. Now, a developer, unfortunately, has the commandments and the ability to do what he likes because. Um, it's on the pressure is on the parish council, town council, or planning committee to find reason to propose it. It's not on the developer to prove that planning is needed, and that's where it starts going wrong. Thank you, thank you. Um, thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I'm not going to hold the motion. And I'd also commend Councillor you know, Cole on his efforts in this regard. Um, he's quite done quite a lot of work on it. Um, but I would also elaborate on what Councillor Modu said in regards to effective bullying. Um, I think it's actually the committee members the motion refers to, so they must have the perception of bullying. Um, if it was the um, if it was the residents that made the presentation of bullying, then I think that would be a proper statement. I would suggest we use misdirect. That might be a word that would be sort of cheap as right. bullying. Um, I'd also want to align with my um, fellow councillor 
quite with regards to the second approach. Um, I do agree that writing a letter to the Secretary of State would be helpful, but it would also be important that we do not lose sight of this Section 106 and the Council and what steps we can take to ensure that the issues we really brought up at that committee meeting are still on the agenda and are raised and discussed at the Section 106. So I will be supporting the motion. Um, I would hope that Councillor Cole will take on the effective, take out the effective volume and replace it with the direct, and also um, proceed with the partnership as a committee as well. Yes, I will be supporting the motion. I've been hearing words like travesty and undemocratic, and that's exactly how I feel about it. And I'm also minded of the fact that it takes a long, long time to build trust in something, and it can be lost in a moment, and it will take a long, long time to gain that trust back. And that's actually how I'm feeling about my shadow council at the moment. I don't really feel like I'm trusting them, and it feels very uncomfortable. And I really would like to get that trust back. This, this process just doesn't work properly. Thank you very much. I think there just seems to be a fair amount of consensus around the table. There's issue about terminology, the use of the term bullying, and um, we have had a constructive suggestion about an alternative word. But it would the proposer, the seconder, and the proposer of the amendment agree with them? I think that I, I think I think to take That's on what Councillor White suggested within the amendment, so that if Councillor Cole's happy to include those in the amendment, I will make one comment, Councillor White. I was in Denmark, and I only found out the meeting because I asked the week before. And I took my lucky enough to have an internet in Denmark, and I found out that the meeting I was asked whether I was still going to attend, even though you and I were calling. Um, so there was something really quite wrong. But I do think you know, how it's right that we must take out the word bullying because we can't speak for somebody else on that legal. And I think you used a form of words it's direct. It's direct, and I think that's that's the right <laughs> word. <laughs> and, and I think we can hopefully see where we get. Oh, no, we're not. Uh, on that basis, I worth taking out, but just to respond to Councillor Morgan's comment, the Buckinghamshire Code of Conduct refers to um, the ACAS definition of bullying. As all of that, blah, blah, blah. Bullying might be a regular pattern of behaviour or a one off incident. That's in the Buckinghamshire mm -hmm. Code of Conduct. So, bullying mm -hmm. can be a one off incident, not just a pattern of behaviour over, 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 over a number of times. So I'm quoting the code of conduct from that picture. Thank you. Do you want to just say something? Not quote, it has the bullying line, it's an extra body. So the bullying is the repetitive intentional hurting of one person or group by another person or group. The relationship involves an imbalance of power. It can happen face to face or online. You know, if you will leave the word bullying in, you're open to Problems as a council. I think that's we, my advice. We, no, have, we have sort of, a, I, I don't know if Council Cole, if you're happy to change that word into misdirection. Um, <laughs> you, Stacey. Yeah. I would, Mayor, but I, I thought long and hard about this. This mm. is why I said effectively bullied. Yeah. I didn't say directly bullied, I said effectively bullied. And that, that was very that was precisely decided. chosen. Thank you. Um, I was going to suggest that we move to a, to a vote, thank you. <laughs> We've got an amendment to vote on first. So, um, those in favour of the amendment, please show. I want to know this is. Yeah. This is the Robbins amendment. <laughs> We've no, we had to do we vote on the um, the proposal uh, or the motion as amended, but 
Are we change? Are we leaving effectively fully in? Can I? Can I Councillor White, Councillor Rodman, did not agree with the opinion. You have to agree with it. That was accepted. And then the third, some of the changes we're talking about now, to change to change that to misdirection. Or you want? I'd have to speak again to misdirection because that would suggest that sorry that the officers, um, Mr. Sorry, I can't get up. Um, that would suggest that. If, if they were misdirected, it, it means there wouldn't be any fines or costs. Mm -hmm. So that's the wrong word, I'm afraid. Okay. Can I use the Can you just point to the four, Councillor Sutton? Councillor David. Um, I'd, I'd support um, the um, terminology effective, effective bullying um, staying in there. Um, it, it explains um, quite succinctly um, why that was effective. Bullying um, following that phrase. Um, and to use the term misdirection would um, seem to um, not put, put across the, the, um, the feeling that was going on in, within, within the participants of the meeting. Thank you. That's the structure. Just, just at the moment, we agreed the amendment. The amendment clearly states at that point, which is quite simple, we're going to seek some information. What we can do with the question of effective forward bullying, we've affected tenure or promotion. We haven't accepted that word. So what we're basically doing is going to get some information. When it comes back to council, mm -hmm. we can then discuss the wording of it at that point. In which case the town clerk can come back with the advice mm. to us at that point, which respects that's the Davis point. I would agree with that. And that point we come back and discuss it then rather than try to do a legalistic argument about it at this point. Mm -hmm. The town clerks are legal officers will give us the right advice. Thank you, Councillor Stratford. We have been asked to move to a vote. I, I was just going to say that, that saying um, there was effective bullying, if it said how we are saying what somebody was giving, it, could we not turn it round and say how it was received? It was perceived by, it was received by some as bullying. Because it clearly was. Mm, thank you. Can, can we now vote on, on the motion as amended, including Councillor Suchbury's and Councillor White's suggestions. Yes. Yeah. Those in favour of the motion, please show. Everybody except Councillor And those against and abstentions. Okay, thank you very much, everybody. Thank you. Um, we move on to item four, the major time applications. 2.1 land at Rosie away. Thank you. Thank you to my publicity. And Councillor Cole, I think this is again going to be. Thank you. Item. Probably heard enough from me tonight, but it, it ain't over yet. <laughs> what we've got before us tonight, um, because it's 130 houses, it's a major application that comes to councils rather than planning later tonight. This is Odeo Wave Phase 1, and this is the Reserve Matters application. This is our final chance now to have our say on it. It's noted that although the entire Phase 1 is in the parish of Orkham and Nembra, it is nevertheless within the Buckingham Neighbourhood Development Plan area, so the BNDP policies still carry weight. We also note the discharge of design code conditions has not yet been approved. We oppose this at our August planning committee meeting. So this is somewhat jumping the gun. In the reserve matter, there's no acknowledgement whatsoever of the Buckingham Vision design statement for dwelling design. The garage blocks look like something from horse racing stables at Newbury or Newmarket with no Buckingham vernacular. There's no chimneys. There's block paving on tertiary and private roads, which is against the NDP policy. And there should be no shared street surfaces. Mm -hmm. The developer, to the credit, is meeting our HP5 35% affordable housing, which is higher than about minimum 
but on a development of 420 dwellings, this should be 147 affordable houses, not the 145 they're showing. The affordable housing is not tenure blind, it's in clusters and none has a garage, so it's quite obvious what they are. While parking spaces do meet belt regulations, unlike Morton Road Phase 3, tandem parking should not be encouraged. That's where you have cars back, back to front in parking spaces. There should be electric vehicle charging points for all dwellings, and this is something that's just come up in the last couple of months. As per Part S Schedule 1 of Building Regulations 2010, which enforce these for all new dwellings, flats, houses, maisonettes, started after the 15th of June 2020. That is now law. Every single dwelling has to have a charging point. Buckinghamshire Recycling and Waste says the weight strategy is unacceptable, particularly regarding bin collection distances. And the lead local flood agency wants more information on surface water drainage suds before it can approve this application. No ecology report has been provided. And Thames Valley Police require an amended crime prevention strategy, noting, for instance, there'll be walls against trees which can be climbed up and over. Finally, Anglian Water's response, having reviewed the development, there's no connection to the Anglian water sewers. We therefore have no comment. That raises a host of questions about where and how sewerage, wastewater, and water supplies are going to be accommodated. And for all the above, I propose that we oppose Ozio Way Phase One Reserve Matters. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, it's just I'm obviously agree with all of what Dr. Lawrence said, but um, just to add, I think, can we also try and urge the lower court to put in grey water recycling, even though it's linked to the current plot and the solar panels? I mean, we won't sell the houses, solar panels on them. They're going to be, they'll sound like optics with the current energy plant. And uh, you all know, I've been using many figures I've had with my solar panels over the last couple of years or so. Um, so can we just add that in as part of our um, uh, you know, plant zero um, policy as you did, just to try and nudge the developer in that direction. I know we have no powers, but except for the ones obviously that uh, uh, Mark has mentioned, but we can get those in every day. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, generally, I agree with the comments that have been made, but there are a couple of items that are perhaps not so excited about. Um, the issue of kidneys perplexes me because I know it was in the 20 year old vision design guide, right? but we can't, you know, we shouldn't be promoting the concept of all providing them, but the least efficient way of keeping the house. I prefer if we were going to encourage the developer to spend more on design than it can go down the route of renewable energy rather than replicating a feature of the past. Um, so that's my personal view on chimneys these days. Um, I'm also not overexcited by garages not being on affordable houses. If we want good quality affordable housing, we're going to spend the money on the house rather than pretending there's a, a garage. It will never be used as a garage because it won't be the right size. So again, I think we need to focus our attention on stuff that actually matters rather than just some, some things that we want to do personal cleaning about. Um, but otherwise, there's so many serious issues here that we're clearly not aware of things to do. Thank you. Thanks, Thank you. Uh, chimneys, they're just decorative. They just belong to They come on a lorry, all these chimneys are ready to be glued on to the top of the, uh, the building. They, they don't connect to anything, they just look pretty. So, you know, yeah, if, if, if people want chimneys to make it look traditional and fact, yes, go ahead. But they don't do any, any they don't serve a purpose at all. Are we ready to? Um vote on this, I believe um, there is Councillor Cole's suggestion and um, opposed this at this point. Yeah. Those in favour? Please show. Yeah. 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 Everybody to the council of the room. And those against? And abstentions. Thank you. I think there will be that is carried. And then the next item, 4.2, is land that Drive. And again, Councillor yeah. Collins, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, the, the last one, unfortunately. Um, this is Foundry Drive, which is bottom of Kindred Road, next door to Clarence Park. Um, 
This is the industrial estate, part of which hasn't been used for many, many years. It's a 0.3 of a hectare site, which is concrete. And it was used, of course, when they're building Clarence Park as the, uh, the builder's yard, the builder's depot. Um, so just to go through a few things about this, um, I came in neighborhood plan, obviously HP5 requires 35% affordable homes on developments which have triggered about policy H1 on sites of three hectares or more, or more than 11 dwellings. And this is above both of those. So therefore, although the developer is only proposing 25% affordable houses, we can insist on 35%. Their planning consultant, Barker Parry, wrongly believes that in his paragraph 4.9, some of the policies in the BNDP are already outdated, e.g. provision of affordable housing. And whilst the regard has been paid to them, they're now reflected in greater detail in the new local plan. The Valp inspector decided otherwise. That's what I'm going with. <laughs> the design statement mentions neither the BD BMDP or Buckingham Vision design statement. There's no Buckingham vernacular, no chimneys, sorry, well, <laughs> no accessible dwellings. There should be no shared street surfaces. All of them are shared with no continuous pathways. Electric vehicle charging points. I've just been through all that. This is the new um, regulations that have now come in. So every one of the 16 houses there should have. EV charging points. No cycle sheds are shown, despite their mention in the design statement. Construction access, and this is going to be a tough one, is proposed through Foundry Drive, not through the more suitable industrial estate, which already has a double entrance onto the site, which the builders of Clarence Park used. A Foundry Drive has a pavement on one side only, it has front doors opening onto the street, children running out into the road, and there's a pinch point halfway along it to calm traffic. I don't see how you can have construction traffic. And we're not talking about small vehicles going up and down this quiet residential street. The local lead local flood authority is opposing this application due to insufficient flood information. A large part of it is actually in flood zone two. Anglian Water does not ask for comment. In its wisdom, Buckinghamshire Council asks Thames Water to comment. <laughs> a, we, have, we have nothing to say. So we're still waiting to hear what Anglian Water is going to do about applying water, sewage, etc., etc., etc. Recycling and waste has concerns about it. It wants further information and amendment. And no contamination report has yet been posted, despite the site's industrial background and its use as a builder's depot while building Clarence Court. A contribution should be requested towards Clarence Park management fees which residents are charged for the shared green spaces and roads. And of course, there's a very big playground there, which is already being used by other people and those who live in Clarence Park. And we need to make sure that they're not going to have to bear the brunt of all that cost through their management fees. Kindred Road Lights. A Buckingham Town Council should request that street lighting for Tindrick Road be considered under a Section 278 mitigation. As per Steve Broadbent's suggestion in his letter to the Council of September the 6th, it's on tonight's planning committee agenda, but he says um, if the industrial site is ever be developed this month, you could get mitigation to provide Tindrick <coughs> Road lights. Here we are, absolute perfect opportunity. Superfast broadband should be provided to all dwellings. And finally, back to our old friend, Section 106 consultation. Buckingham Town Council should be involved in all Section 106 consultations on this site regarding recreation and leisure, education, traffic and travel, and health provisions. And for all the above, I propose that we oppose this application. Thank you, Councillor Cole. Councillor Cole. I'll second that, obviously. Um, to agree with all of what Councillor Cole says. Again, I'd add in uh, the grade of the site from the state and some of the panels, and of course, the new challenge we're going to be in. Um, and yes, I'll just say the same thing about. Lighting and tinting as well. So, I'm not there first. Um, yeah, all right. I'm surprised that we've got people on the field. Thank you, Councillor White, then Councillor Tabone. Thank you. Um, whilst it is a shame to lose, to lose another, another industrial site, I think given our proximity to Silverstone Park and some of the great developments there, the Toronto Adventure is not a, not a big, big issue. However, I think. Whilst I agree with nearly everything that um, Mark has mentioned in terms of the design, I think there's actually a more fundamental issue with it, which is actually a terrible placement. It's an awful layout. 
um, the connectivity to gingerbread is, is, is not there. There is no connection to gingerbread. Um, it has a tiny pinch point to get into Foundry Drive. It's a very isolated little end of the development. So in terms of uh, encouraging people to walk and cycle to school and into the town centre, it is doing everything that you should not do in placement. And it's appalling because they're trying to squeeze too many houses inside. So mm -hmm. there was an issue of all the development, which means they can't provide more space for footpaths to get to Timber Road because it's a difficult site. There are level changes and they're trying to ignore all that by pretending it's not an issue. It, it's, on the plan, that's been helpful to be included. There's open space in you. You can't get to it. No one's ever going to get to that. So this site effectively has no open space because it's not accessible. Mm -hmm. So I think, you know, Going back to chimneys, I think about chimneys all right, but actually there's far more fundamental issues to the core principle design proposal, which is it's bad place making, doesn't respect the topography, it doesn't create good uh, accessibility to the town centre, despite its proximity to the town centre, mm -hmm. and actually those issues, plus the other points that we made earlier, drainage, uh, access, uh, transport, and the rest of it, um, clearly can't uh, support this application. Uh, it needs to come back in a completely revised format to be considered sensible. Thank you. Um, um, yes, Madam um, Mayor, I just want to clarify why I've been abstaining from this application as well, as the earlier one. I'm being a member of the North um, Box Planning Committee. That's okay. why I will not be voting in this. Well. Thank you very much. Are we ready to vote on the bill? Yeah. Just to clarify, um, um, cool. We don't know whether it will appear on the North Box Planning Committee, do we? But um, <laughs> we're not staying um, in case it ever does. Um, but the other one, which is down the third, down the road, is also such an issue. We won't be talking about that on the North Box Planning Committee. For those who accept that we should oppose this application, please go. So, just to clarify, is that Additional comments or just as the mark comments? No, your comments. Um, yeah, um, yeah, and the words too. Yeah, well, we're happy to like accept all words. Yeah. 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 What is coming? Thank you. Those against and Thank you. Thank you very much. Oh, thank you. Um, item five is chair's announcements. And I would just like to take this opportunity this evening to thank everybody, councillors and council staff, who, in their response to the death of our Queen, um, their work has been outstanding and they, they've done such a good yeah. job. And my special thanks to Councillor Jacob for the second in her absence as well. And yeah. 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 I think we've marked the death of our Queen in, in, in a very Appropriate way for stopping the lung cancer. Yeah. Thanks to everybody who's enabled that. Sorry, I just wanted to add my thanks to the council staff. You have been absolutely fantastic, worked really hard, everybody. Mm -hmm. And being thrown into this, I felt extremely well supported. That's good. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your forbearance this evening. I'm conscious we've got another meeting, uh, which we'll do convene shortly. The date of the next the council is the 10th of October, and in the council on the 7th of November. 